Wa aya cheki. Mende to kala laka koke in gote meneke na mingi. Miamia, miawi pia yangwe uaha. Miami ongi, shawan ongi, miamia mission, mission ne pondekan ingi. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the ninth biennial Miamiake Conference here on the ancestral lands of the Miamia and Shawnee people. We are absolutely delighted to host this event at Miami University's Armstrong Student Center. It's good to see everyone, both virtually and also in person. My name is Daryl Baldwin, and I'll be serving as your host today. I want to welcome all of our virtual participants as well. Uh, we have uh, 500 uh, people signed up for this conference, and we have 322 signed up in person. This is by far the largest conference we've ever had. <laughs> <clears throat> I know we're all anxious to get back together after COVID, and, and so we really look forward to uh, sharing with you today. Before we really begin uh, with our program, I'd like to take a moment and uh, welcome you all through song. Uh, Ayacheke, we're going to start by singing a, a community song to recognize that we're coming back together as a community out of this period of isolation, and then a song about uh, welcoming uh, guests to our homelands. Yeah. 
Does everybody hear me okay? All right. Okay. Sounds good? Great. All right. Just a couple of uh, housekeeping matters here uh, before we launch. You'll notice we've got some art tables in the back, and I encourage you when you have time or on break or if you're moving in and out, feel free to stop by the tables and visit with folks. I'd also ask that you take a moment and silence your cell phone, like I'm going to do right now. <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> and our format is going to be consistent with what we've done in the past. And what we'd like to do is uh, allow the presenters as much time as possible to present. Uh, we don't uh, do a question and answer uh, here in the audience, but what we, the speakers will all have tables set up out front of where the breakfast was at this morning. And you're free to go there and, and visit with the speakers and, and have in-depth conversation with them. And we found over the years that that interaction actually works pretty well. So the speakers will be set up at their tables at the designated time. I believe that information has all been provided for you. Uh, let's see. So in March of 2020, we were preparing to hold this very conference. Well, we, we all know what happened, so I no reason to uh, go into that. But here we are, two years later, picking up the threads that we were forced to, to put down. I want to begin by acknowledging the challenges our tribal communities faced during the pandemic. Many communities were already under great pressure to preserve their languages, as older generations of first language speakers were passing. The pandemic only exasperated that reality. But we remain resilient and determined to continue 
the work that is so important to preserving our identities as indigenous people. Today's conference is just one example of the accomplishments we continue to make as Miamia people, even when challenged by events beyond our control. Today, we will put forward our most recent activities and developments that directly support our ongoing efforts to reconnect Miamia people to each other and to their Miamia knowledge system. Central to this broad effort is the unique relationship we have with an institution that bears our name, Miami University. The relationship between Miami University and the Miami Tribe of Oklahoma has never been stronger than it is today. In this current year of 2022, we celebrate 50 years of relationship building, a journey that began in 1972 when then Chief Forrest Olds made a trip to campus to visit an institution he had only heard about. A partnership that would evolve over time, developing a level of respect and commitment towards the education of tribal youth and other members of the campus community. Napondingi, learning from each other, is the phrase we use to describe what is truly an amazing outcome of years of efforts by many individuals, some of you in this room today. Kikwe Situle, I want to show my respect to you all. I am honored to be embedded within this effort to serve as the executive director of the Miamia Center, an entity dedicated to the preservation and promotion of our Miamia knowledge system, and to introduce the lineup of incredible tribal scholars and educators who will be sharing our work with you today. I also want to personally thank our tribal leaders who are present here today. Our tribal leaders play an important role in this effort. We simply would not be able to do what we do without their direct support. And to that end, I'd like to welcome Akima, Chief Doug Lankford. Nijuna <clears throat> Menge Akima, Second Chief Dustin Olds. Where are you, Dustin? Metame <clears throat> Achimwa, First Council Person Tara Hatley. <clears throat> Nijo Namenge Achimwa, second council person, Scott Willard. In the back there. Mm -hmm. And Achimwa council person, uh, Danya Williams, who was not able to make it today. Um, she is also serves as our secretary treasurer, and I believe that she's joining us online today. So. I want to thank these leaders for taking time out of what is a really uh, busy, busy schedule uh, to come and, and join us today. So. We're going to try to stay uh, on task. I think if we weren't doing virtual, um, you know, we might be able to have a little bit more flex, but since we have so many individuals that um, are logging on to see certain specific presentations, uh, we're going to try to stay on task as much as we can, so at least within a, a few minute um, few minute window. Um, I'm not going to give a lot of introduction to the individual speakers, mainly because you know we have all of the bios, profiles, uh, introductionary videos on the website, and we hope that you've taken some time uh, to to familiarize yourself with who the speakers are. That allows us to spend more time uh, giving our speakers a chance to really share the work that they're engaged in. In the past, I've given some commentary, sometimes before, sometimes after a presentation. Um, a lot of times I try to just give some context. All of this work is connected to each other. And so when we talk about revitalization, whether it's language, whether it's culture, whatever it is, from our perspective in a tribal community, it's really the revitalization of the entire community. There isn't any aspect of that community that is not affected or plays an important role in supporting 
any revitalization activities. So although, yes, language and culture are important, we focus on those. We also recognize that there's a lot of other revitalization activities around that. Um, everything from economic development to protecting our sovereignty to building our land base as a tribal uh, community, um, developing a wide range of resources that, that feed and support that. So try to keep in mind that these presentations are all very connected in that way. The vast majority of the work of the Miamia Center is really focused on what we as a tribal community in Northeast Oklahoma need for our citizens who live in diaspora. They, they live all over the United States. We do have central locations in Oklahoma, Kansas, in the homelands of Indiana and Ohio because of the forced relocations that our ancestors experienced. <clears throat> that work is central to preserving the nation. Simply put, our ancestors preserved through the treaty process their inherent right, it was not a right granted to us, it's an inherent right to govern ourselves, to direct our activities, and to serve our people in what we collectively think is in the best interest of the nation. And language and cultural revitalization plays a really, really important uh, role in that. You're going to see a lot of different aspects of that. Everything from our growing student base to our technological development to our educational development. And it's, it's really huge. It's big. And it's more than what we actually have the resources to do. So we're in a, we're in a process of, of growth, of expansion, of, of planning and trying to figure out what this is going to look like for us. It's only been since the 1990s that legislation was established in the United States for the first time giving protection to our indigenous languages and cultures. The passage of the 1990 Native American Languages Act, the passage of the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, and other acts that happened during that time have been really, really critically important. That's not that long ago. And when you think about a revitalization effort and the kind of work that we do, it's intergenerational. And it's just going to take time. And we need to be able to have space to figure out what that's going to look like for us. And to be able to put some legs under an effort like this. And so what really Miami University has done is it's given us that space to explore that. And that's what the Miami Center is. So as you look at these presentations today, what you're, what you're seeing is you're seeing us trying to figure it out. In many cases, the te technology isn't even there for us, and the tools aren't there for us, because a lot of the software packages were not developed for the kind of work that we do. So in some cases, we have to literally develop the technological tools, our tools of the trade, in order to do that work. You're going to see various technology pieces today that are in different stages of development. And like a lot of technology, there's always a starting point, but there's almost never an ending point in their development unless you just continue that software. And there have been cases in our past where we have invested heavily in software only for that software to be discontinued 10, 15 years down the, down the road. And that's been very frustrating for us. So I would say probably in the last 10 years, we've really started to take on the responsibility of of building and managing the software that we need in order to promote and, and do the work uh, that we're all here to do. So I think that's the best way I can describe in a, in a, in a broad sense what these presentations are going to be today. I encourage you all to engage with people around you. There's over 100 tribal members that have registered uh, to be part of this conference. So a large part of this audience are tribal citizens. Uh, we're all here to support each other and, and also to learn and to share, and we want to do that in the context of Miami University's campus. So don't hesitate to engage with people uh, if you know they're from the tribe. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our very first speakers. Now, I mentioned earlier that the vast majority of our work was for the Miami Tribe of Oklahoma. But we've long recognized that the work of language and cultural revitalization is now a global issue. And 
Many years ago, we invested in uh, a program that was born out of California uh, called Breath of Life. And Breath of Life eventually became a national program funded by National Science Foundation. And in 2015, the Miyamiya Center became the institutional home. We felt very strongly that we needed to at least carve out some of our resources to be able to support that because as tribal communities, we need to have a, a, a venue by which we share these development ideas and these approaches. And by doing that, we strengthen all of us. And so the National Breath of Life is our only national program, uh, but it's one that's growing very fast as more and more tribes enter that space where they have to rely on archival materials uh, to develop language and cultural programs. And to that end, I want to uh, introduce uh, my colleagues uh, who uh, direct the National Breath of Life program, Dr. Gabriela Perez-Bayez and Jerome Viles. Okay. <laughs> 